It's all yours, whenever you want it, with your own choice of doctor. And that goes for the whole family. The scheme is comprehensive. It's not only to help you when you're ill, but to help to keep you well. And, of course, the younger generation will stand to gain the biggest benefits of all. In 2021, more than half of trans, non-binary and gender diverse respondents stated that they had avoided going to their GP when they were unwell. A further third said that they had been refused treatment based on their trans status. We have a problem and we need to talk about it. Hi, my name's Cass. I'm a nurse in this emergency department and I'm trans. This is a new series of films aimed at you, my NHS colleagues. As we've already heard, we, as a health and social care system, have a problem in the way that we are perceived by and the way that we look after trans people. Trans people face discrimination, a lack of understanding and gatekeeping behaviour in the way that they access care. Their incidence of communicable disease, substance misuse, suicide and even diabetes is significantly higher than the general population. This is compounded by factors that we already talk about, arguably not enough, such as ethnicity, and poverty. Healthcare inequality is killing trans people in the UK. We know that healthcare professionals feel anxious and underprepared to treat trans people and that care suffers as a result. But that puts us as healthcare providers in the best position to reverse this. A large component here is anticipated discrimination. You have one bad experience with a GP or clinic or you hear one horror story from a friend and that makes you less likely to engage with services in the future. Even more worrying is the fact that we don't even know the true scale of the problem. The data is sparse, mainly based in the USA, and it's overwhelmingly qualitative. We don't even know how many trans people there are in the UK. The 2021 census was the first to ask this question, in England at least, but at the time of filming, the results have yet to be published. Various sources give figures of one to 4%, which is actually similar to the amount of people living with Crohn's disease or COPD. If you work in adult healthcare, you probably know to use caution when giving supplemental oxygen to a patient with COPD. But do you know how to do a digital prostate exam on a post-vaginoplasty trans woman? Do you know if a non-binary trans man can get pregnant? Do you even know what those words mean? Well, we're going to find out the answers to those questions and a whole lot more, but first we need to get some basic definitions out of the way. So what is a trans person? Well, that subject can and has filled books, but for our purposes, a trans person is someone whose gender does not match the sex they were assigned at birth. All babies are assigned to sex at or even before birth, usually just based on their external genital appearance. Intersex babies, which may or may not show signs of external genital ambiguity, can sometimes be an exception to this rule. It's important to note that while some intersex people do consider themselves trans, plenty don't. A lot of the issues we're going to discuss do actually affect intersex people as well, but they may or may not consider themselves trans. Let us know if you want to learn more about this. For most people, this assumption of their sex assigned at birth was a good one, and it's something you never think about again, and it stays with you for life. But for some of us, that's not the case, and that's what makes us trans. You may also hear transgender, which is used interchangeably with trans. This is the term with the broadest usage and acceptance, but some other people may use different terminology to refer to themselves. It's best just to mirror their language in this case. The opposite of trans, by the way, is cis, which is short for cisgender. Trans is the Latin prefix for across or on the other side of, while cis means the same side. You don't necessarily have to identify as cisgender, but it is a useful term when it comes to discussing the trans population. Non-binary is also a term that fills books. For healthcare professionals, all that most of us need to know is that some people don't have any particular affinity for maleness or femaleness, or might have an affinity for both or neither. Sometimes their conception of gender might change based on the passing of time or even just in different situations. You might hear terms like agender, genderqueer or gender fluid. Unless you work closely with this community, you don't really need to know the nuances of all of these terms. It's just about respecting and trusting each individual's lived experience and assessing whether it's relevant to their care. It's usually not. So, is this different from sexuality? Mostly, sexuality describes someone's attraction to men, women, both or neither. Trans people can be straight, gay, bi or whatever, the same as cis people can. There's more to say here, which will be a common theme throughout this series, but we're going to leave it there for introductory purposes. Something we're going to keep coming back to is that it's okay to ask. There's a lot of terminology here and it's easy to get bogged down, but I think the main thing to remember is that it's always okay to ask relevant and informed questions. You're genderqueer? Okay, so would you prefer to be accommodated in male or female same-sex spaces? Can I ask if you have a uterus? It will affect the way that we assess and treat your abdominal pain. 
If you're unsure if it's appropriate to ask something, then just question yourself. Do you have a justification for why it's relevant? If it is, then just ask it. That's absolutely fine. As trans people, we're used to being exceptions to the rule, and if you're coming from an obvious place of understanding and respect, then it's gonna make the whole interaction easier and safer for everyone. It's important not to ask irrelevant questions just out of curiosity. This may be your first trans patient, but you are their hundredth curious healthcare professional. They've come to you for help, not to teach you something. It's alienating and off-putting. You can always just look it up later. Something else that we need to talk about is that there's no right way to be trans or non-binary. Forget what you've seen in the movies. There's no such thing as a sex change. There's certainly not any kind of overnight switch. Some of us will choose medical interventions like hormone therapy. We may take one or a combination of hormones and these grant us sex characteristics because we go through a second puberty. Like the first puberty that we all went through, this doesn't really have a fixed endpoint and many, if not most trans people will be on hormones for most or all of their lives. Likewise, we may seek surgeries such as facial reconstruction, breast augmentation, breast removal, or even genital surgeries. This isn't a given though. Plenty of trans people will only want limited medical interventions and some won't want any medical intervention at all. This is complicated by the way that trans care is provided in the UK. We could talk for a long time about gender identity clinics, which are the specialist services that are supposed to provide this care. But to be brief and diplomatic, they're insufficient. A Freedom of Information request revealed that the waiting time for the main clinic in London from a referral in March 2021 was projected at 26 years until your initial appointment. 26 years. The clinic itself says that the waiting time is more like 52 months with a further 18 months wait until your first recommendation for hormone therapy. Another clinic saw just two patients in an entire calendar year with thousands on their waiting list. These services are supposed to be subject to the same waiting time targets as any other specialist service in the UK. The clinics themselves only assess. Hormones are actually provided by the patient's own GP on the recommendation of the GIC. They may provide referrals for surgeries. These are provided by a small number of both NHS and privately practicing surgeons. Specialist services for children are even more inaccessible. One has been rated as ineffective by the CQC. Puberty blockers are theoretically available. These allow young people to delay their natural puberty until they reach the age of 18, where they can make an informed decision to actually medically transition. That's the theory anyway, but in reality, puberty blockers are either offered too late to delay natural puberty, or in most cases, just not given at all. These approaches are not subject to formalized NICE guidelines or robust CQC oversight. The evidence base for which interventions are or are not offered is uh, limited to say the least. As a result of what is for many patients effectively indefinite exclusion from the NHS, many will turn to understanding GPs who themselves might risk professional consequences. They may also turn to private providers who can charge hundreds or thousands for even the most basic interventions. Worryingly, some trans people will even source medications from online pharmacies abroad. These are unregulated and unlicensed. And to make it worse, the patient's own GP may just refuse to monitor their hormone levels and for various other side effects. These side effects are rare, but it's important to look out for them. I'm telling you this not to appear unhelpfully antagonistic, but because this serves as crucial background as to why trans people may just not trust us to provide adequate care. After all, we all work under the same NHS logo. That means it's on all of us to do better. So how do we get better? This is the first in a series of films looking at specific areas of healthcare. Next, we're going to look at the emergency department. How do we go about assessing, treating and referring trans patients? We'll then look at mental health care, followed by maternity. Trans parents exist and they deserve the same standards of care as everyone else. But there's some huge barriers that we need to overcome. If there are any other areas that you'd like to see covered, then let us know. I'm so excited to go on this journey with you, but for now, thank you for watching.